Bonjour, my name is David DeVere. I'm a wine educator and traveler, and you're watching Savvy Nomad TV. This is the O to V edition. Today is number four of the Costco Wine Advent Calendar. We are doing oh, this heavy box of wine. Okay, let's see what number four has got for us. Now, so far we've gone red, white, red, is it going to be another white wine, or are they going to throw in a rosé? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, day four is right here. I, oh, ooh, silver capped top. Uh, it's a white wine. It's from Hungary. Hungry. Wow, it's a coning glitch. Ooh, I'm gonna have to look this up. I have no idea. Oh, it's a new one for me. Okay, let me uh, consult the Bible of wine and um, then I'll get back to you. Did you get a good look at that name because I'm not exactly sure how to say this. Conning Leash. Conning Leash. Conning Leash. Hmm. New one for me. So I consulted the very excellent wine grapes. I call it a Bible, but it is every single grape variety in the world. This thing never fails to produce the correct answer. Done by Jancis Robinson, a very expensive book, but if you're into wine and grapes and things like that, if you wanna geek out on your grape varieties, this is the tome. One source, one excellent source. And I looked up Konings Lisha in here and it tells me it's a synonym for the word Fetskia regalia. So this is Fetskia regalia, which is a grape variety from Romania. It was first noticed in the 1920s, was entered as a wine in the Bucharest wine competition in 1928. Ha, I love that. So this is a particularly young cultivar. They're not sure exactly if it's a hybrid or whatever. It showed up in a nursery and it was promoted. And here it is in our little Costco wine box. Here's what else the book says. It's thin skinned. It is susceptible to noble rot. That's botrytis, meaning it can get a fungus that can dehydrate the grape and concentrate the sugars. Some of the best dessert wines in the world are made this way. It is cold hardy, but not drought hardy. It produces floral aromas or even exotic tropical fruit aromas. Okay, let's give it a try. Now, even though I don't know the particular grape or the style that the winemaker is going to use, it's white and white wines like it a little bit chilly. So testing the temperature, it's 58.5. That's fine. I wouldn't want it any warmer than that, and I wouldn't want it too much colder. 45 degrees is about the coldest you want to keep your whites. But a refrigerator is going to chill your wines way down into the 30s. Not freezing, obviously, that's what the freezer does. And so if you're keeping your wine in the refrigerator, it's going to be numbed out. And what does numbed out wine taste like? Well, the aromas get subdued. So if you've got a particularly aromatic wine like this Konings Leisha, then you are going to miss out if you're keeping it in your fridge. 
you'll want to warm that wine up into 50 degrees. That's probably the best. 58, like today. Ooh, this cork is tight. Is probably the maximum, but is going to give me, ah, oh, satisfying. <laughs> it's going to give me the best opportunity to smell those aromas because they're going to volatilize at higher temperatures. Okay. Pour this in my glass. Get my tasting card. And let's see, was there an alcohol percentage on here? 12.5%. I, I sense this trend. It's all 12.5% on all of these so far. Okay. Look at it. Looks nice. Looks kind of like a Chardonnay if I didn't know better. And I was just looking at the, at the glass. I would think it was a Chardonnay or maybe a Sauvignon Blanc, but it's more yellowy in, in character. And uh, that color of yellow is kind of a deeper yellow. So I would guess Chardonnay, but of course I would be wrong because I've never had this grape variety. Good job, Costco wine box. What a weird thing to source. I'm into it. Well, it smells sweet. It is floral. I get a little hint of pineapple. Maybe some peach. Maybe a little of grapefruit. Oh, my mouth is starting to water. It smells nice. This is probably the best smelling wine we've had so far. Of course, we're only on number four, but you know, you get it. Okay, so aroma, very pleasant. Is it a nine or a 10? Probably not, but you know what? I'm feeling generous, nine. Okay, let's try it. Mmm. So it's dry. It has a medium body. It's not medium full. The acidity is nice and bright. There is, I'm going to circle fresh. There is this real, almost a touch of honey flavor from the initial taste of the wine, but the wine is not thick and cloying in the mouth. It's not heavy at all. So the acidity, I'm going to give it an eight. The balance, it seems good. There's an, a little bit of an odd finish. I'm going to have to think about that, but I'm not going to grade balance at this moment. I'm going to think simply about alcohol, acidity, and how those two things play together and the sugars. I think it's fine. I'll give it an eight. Complexity. Actually, I kind of think this wine might have, this might be the most complex wine we've had yet. There's definitely an attack of fruit, fresh fruit flavors. I'm getting, I do get pineapple from it, but it is a little watery. No, it, it falls apart at the end. The beginning is nice and then it kind of falls apart. But there are some flavors there. I'll give it a seven. And the finish, it's not bad, but does it add to the sensation? That's what I want to know. Does it add to the sensation in a good way? And I'm going to think no. I'm going to give it a five for finish. Wow, what an interesting wine. I'm going to go do my math. Okay, here are my final scores for our Hungarian Konelisha. I still don't think I'm saying that right, but whatever. Uh, aroma, 
9, Acidity 8, Balance 8. Oh, and it was doing so good, and now it starts to fall apart. Complexity, 7. That's a fair score. But the finish. Ah, the finish kept this wine from really moving into the 90s. So the finish was 5. Bollocks. Right, total score, 87 points. The scoring chart is a ruthless master because even if you want to like something, it dictates that you must follow along and score on what you notice, not what you like. It's perception, not preference. Ugh. Anyway, that's it for this week. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing, and I'll see you tomorrow for day number five. Until then, I say a tutelaire and cheers. Hello. I might have overheard that this smells good. I love it when they smell good. Oh, tropical. Oh, that does smell good. Okay, I know. I could just sniff for like five, ten minutes. <laughs> All right, I have to taste it. Big mouth feel. Mmm. Makes your mouth water. Wow, it's both um, a full mouth and at the same time mouth watering, which is usually for me associated with a thinner wine. So that's yummy. I like that. So far, I'm a little bit on more thumbs up on the two whites we've had than the two reds, even though everything is certainly good enough. Cheers. <laughs>